Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. Hey, baby. How you doing? <laughs> I'm fantastic. Do you How not are like, you? Do you not like it when I look at you over my glasses like that? You look like Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. All right, I'll quit doing that. Hey, uh, coming up later in the program, uh, today's Thursday. Holy cow, how did that happen? Uh, we've got Make Work Work. It's a book from Shola Richards. I'm actually excited to talk to him about this. He sent the book. It's a good-looking book, i got to tell you that. And he's talking about people who maybe don't like their job, and they they go there and they're not happy. And they're crabby. Yeah, he's saying, cranky. hey, here's, here's some ideas on how you can make work work. And he, it sounds like he went through some pretty rough stuff, so... Uh, Looking forward to chatting with Shola Richards later in the program. Study says Americans are sleeping less. Millions are turning to strong nighttime remedies to make them nod off, like Ambien and Lunesta, or like Heidi, tequila. (laughs) Hey. (laughs) Just kidding. Don't judge me. No, you don't really do that. Most American mosquitoes... Let me me say that again. (laughs) Most Americans misquote... Most Americans misquote Lincoln's Gettysburg Address, <laughs> believing for some reason that he said four score and seven years ago, our forefathers brought forth. He actually said our fathers. He never said our forefathers. Okay. So there you go. And he didn't say mosquitoes either. That's, <laughs> I have mosquitoes coming up later. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. Today is Thursday, September the 15th, 8-Track Tape Day, Felt Hat Day, Google Day. So today, didn't we just have a Google Day like, I don't know, like a week ago? I think they think every day is Google Day. Apparently. Greenpeace Day today, International Day of Democracy, International Dot Day, speaking of dots... Have you seen the picture on our Facebook page? Yes, you showed me. Now, did you see the dots? I saw lots of dots. You saw more dots than you were supposed to see. So if you haven't seen it, we're going to talk more about that later in the program. What you were pointing out was a bullseye. That's different than a dot. A dot is a black circle. There are lots of black circles on there. I don't think so. (laughs) Facebook.com slash John and Heidi show. You'll know what we're talking about. You see the image on there. Anyway, International Dot Day today. It's also National Cheese Toast Day today. What? And it's cheese toast. Yeah, I don't know. What How that would you is. make cheese toast? I have no idea. And it's Rain Day, which stands for Rape, Abuse, Incest National Network. So no jokes about that. That's that's a serious thing. So anyway, a lot of stuff going on today. Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. Email marketing is affordable and a proven way to grow your business. If it's done right, you can stay in contact with your customers to let them know when you have new things to offer. You stay in control the whole time, too. You decide when the messages are sent and you decide what is being said. So you're constantly in control of your business image. You can do this, but don't try it on your own. Team up with one of the biggest names in email marketing, Constant Contact. Sign up for a free trial right now at Radiosavings.com. Sign up now at Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. You know it's true because you heard it on the radio. Most people have a smartphone these days. A lot of yeah, people do. There's people some do. people that don't. They still have like the flip phone. I actually met a guy that doesn't even have a, a cell phone. He's your dad. Why no? He's, <laughs> he's an idiot. That's not very normal. Most people have now. Charlie, no cell phone, nothing. Anyway, smartphones, they're out. How about a smart toilet? You ready for that? Okay. Japanese firm Matsu. Shita Electric has invented a toilet that can change your life each time you use it. It can analyze what you've been eating and tell you about dietary changes that you should make. I would not want that. (laughs) I would definitely not want that. (laughs) Not only this, but the information can be transmitted directly to your doctor if you'd like. It will also measure weight, body fat, and sugar levels in your urine and provide an instant readout from a mini computer. Plus, the optional lifestyle pack will provide other features like a warning system that asks, did you forget to flush? Oh, my God. A device that deters your dog from drinking out of the bowl. I have one of those. My, it's kind of like an old flip phone. Mine's called a lid. You just flip the lid down. That, that deters the dogs. And what else to say? A device for, and, and a reminder not to waste too much toilet paper. It's currently a massive success in Japan. With plans to now market in Europe, no word on whether or not they'll ever bring this to the United States. 
Do you think it would be a success here? I don't. And I'll tell you why. Why is that? Because I don't think Americans need a toilet to analyze their <laughs> to tell them they eat like <laughs> 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 We already you, know this. You can't say <laughs> any of that on the radio. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Heidi. It's true. You you know what I'm saying. I know true. I know what you're saying, but you can't say that here. You're right. We don't need we don't need anybody to remind us that we're eating bad, or that Heidi's talking bad. <laughs> Stick around. We have the John Show coming back in just a bit. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. The John and Heidi Show is brought to you in part by the Keystone Treatment Center. This is your brain, and this is your brain on drugs. We share silly stories here on the program, but addiction is no joke. If you or someone you know suffers with an addiction to drugs or alcohol, make today the day you seek help. Call toll-free 844-204-1055. That's a toll-free number. Again, 844-204-1055. And this is your brain on drugs. You ever wonder why the airline asks questions like, has someone else packed your bags for you? Or are you carrying illegal substances? Do they think people are dumb enough Nobody's to say... Nobody's going to answer that, honestly. You it's, think someone's dumb enough to say yes? I am sure <laughs> that somewhere, sometime, somebody has said yes. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> a Spanish drug smuggler oh my recently gosh. had a Freudian slip when he was going through customs. The agent said all the routine questions. And when they asked Jose Antonio if he was carrying any prohibited goods without even thinking, he said yes. <laughs> Authorities then found he was carrying 1.5 kilograms oh of my cocaine. Gosh. And they arrested him. He got caught because they said, you got anything illegal in here? Well, yeah, cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> well, other than the cocaine, no. <laughs> Nothing I'm else. Dead. No, everything else is fine. <laughs> wow. What kind of a moron? <laughs> Can you imagine? There's somebody somewhere that was paying this man to deliver this yeah. stuff. <laughs> Well, maybe he wanted to get caught. Maybe they've know. been threatening him for a long time, and he be. thought, this is the easiest way to get out you of know, this. I'll just be in prison. Could be. All I know as a kid, this is what happens when your brain is on drugs. John and Heidi. Now, your moment of duh. We have had the moment of duh a couple of times about people who have misused the 911 system. It's for emergencies. Mm -hmm. Like you, one time we talked about a person who dialed 911 because the, the fast food place hadn't gotten their food for them fast. Remember that? Right. Well, this moment of Doug goes back to a 911 call. And I don't even think he needed to call 911 to know that what he, what he was calling about was a bad idea. A guy recently called 911 and he said, I have kind of a weird feeling. I went out for dinner last night and I brought home my leftover pizza but I left it in the car this morning and it was soggy and it tasted kind of funny. So I went back out to the car and that's when I noticed that the antifreeze had spilled <gasps> all over my pizza. Oh my gosh. Is that dangerous? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing wasting time calling me? You will we'll dispatch an ambulance. Oh instantly. my gosh. He didn't even know. He's like, I don't know. I'm feeling kind of funny. Should, should I, should I be calling the ambulance? I would never thing? eat soggy pizza anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just how did he not notice? That you would there think was it antifreeze. This is yeah. really funny. He's like, wow, this is really, and it's green. It's just really <laughs> weird. But I'm so but hungry. I'm, like, I'm just gonna finish it. I'm famished. I hate to waste food. Yeah. Coming up, <laughs> coming up, we're gonna talk about cats, and we're gonna talk about dots, and we're gonna talk about a blind man driving. Oh, it's a fun scoop of the day, and it is on the way. The Scoop of the Day is brought to you by Wells Blue Bunny. If you want delicious ice cream, be sure to look for the Blue Bunny. Sure to have your favorite flavors. Learn more at BlueBunny.com. Now, your Scoop of the Day. A little bit ago, we were telling you that today is National, no, International Dot Day. All right. Not just national. All right. This is all around the world, Heidi. And this little thing that uh, we've, we've had it on our Facebook page for a few days it is from uh, Nino, and anyway, it's on there. It's an image of a bunch of lines that intersect, and if you look at the dots, it, I think it drives you crazy or something. I don't know. When you look at it, it's just it's it's interesting, and you see dots that don't really exist. So on International Dot Day, go check it out at facebook.com slash John and Heidi Show. We posted it a few days ago. Moving on now. Every ad in the London Underground Station has been replaced with cat photos. So okay. that's a subway system. When you when you you know step out into the digital underground, I'm sorry, just the underground, London underground. That's what it is. I was thinking of a band, <laughs> London underground. 
A group of cat lovers raised enough money to replace all of the standard adverts, which are advertising here, sure. with pictures of cats. The Citizens Advertising Takeover Service, which stands for cats, <laughs> started a crowdfunding campaign to raise money to replace the standard ads for health foods and smartphone apps with images of cats, and they succeeded. Their group is called Cats, and it's all photos of cats. All righty. So we need to start our own group That's called so exciting. Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this story literally made me LOL out loud. Oh, my gosh. You sound so out of touch when you do that. I'm just being silly. I laughed out loud when I read this. So I'm not going to read the headline. I already kind of gave it away because I said it was coming up. But a blind man was banned from driving for three years for getting behind the wheel of his buddy's car. This happened in England. I'm just glad it didn't happen banned here. Banned for driving for three years? Yeah, for only, after three years he can drive? Apparently. He, he's a blind he's man. Blind. He's been banned for driving for three years because the man was pulled over by police who saw him driving, er- <laughs> driving erratically. The man's passenger told police that he was telling the blind man where to turn and when to brake. Oh, my gosh. Because he himself had lost his license and needed to get somewhere. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what the what? This is crazy. How is that even? And he lost his license for three years. <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't you think you'd lose your license forever? The the guy next to him lost his license for three years? Or the blind, the blind man the blind shouldn't man have a license. The blind man lost his license for three years. The There's blind no man way. Was- that's what it says. There's no way he has I'm a reading, license. I'm telling you, maybe he used to not be blind, and now he is. I have no clue. All I know, that story made me almost spit coffee out my nose when I first read it. I couldn't wait to share that here because it's just so ridiculous, but apparently it's true. <laughs> the average American woman spends thousands of dollars each year on beauty and salon treatments. That's about 160 hours of grooming and primping. Phoebe Baker Hyde decided to explore what would happen if she gave up makeup for a year. She said, I did what a man would do. I put on deodorant, I put a little gel, and then I headed out the door. Maybe I can maybe I can approximate that. The makeup would go. The jewelry would go. Uh, the author of a book called The Beauty Experiment, uh, Baker, said she felt more beautiful than ever without all the makeup. Now, my beautiful wife that sits next to me here each day, you don't really wear a lot of makeup, do I you? don't wear a lot of makeup, but I do feel what? awful if I don't have at least my eyeliner on. You look good even without that. No, I look very tired. In fact, when I'm not wearing it, people ask me if I'm feeling okay. So <laughs> I must really? look sick and ill <laughs> beyond belief when I don't have it on because people are like, are you all right? Are you okay? <laughs> you want me to grab you? Yeah, thanks. I just don't have something? any. Thanks for that. Just don't have any makeup on. Anyway, if you want to know more, her book is called The Beauty Experiment. And finally, people are accustomed to nagging from doctors and family members and they're not taking their medications properly, but they might be getting some help now from an unlikely source. New designs for drug packages and plans for labels that are easier to understand to help people that are sick get their drug regimens. New technologies include a bottle cap with a wireless chip that would actually remind you with a flashing light and an audible alert to take your meds. Oh, that's a good idea. It is. So they're saying, hey, this this would be a thing that would like... Chime in and say, hey, it's time for your meds. That Take is your meds. a very good idea. So somebody's got that plan. But then you'd have to leave your medicine out where it's Apparently. visible at all times. <laughs> Why is the cupboard And then flashing? you've got children <laughs> What's that, that would have sound? access to your... What is that alert sound coming from the bathroom? And nothing... I mean, flashing lights <laughs> never attract children. No. <laughs> so actually, that might not be a good idea. <laughs> at first blush, it's not a good <laughs> All right. This has been your Scoop of the Day. When it comes to politics, quite often you have an opinion, especially for this election. How would you like a platform to let your opinion be heard? PoliticalStorm.com is that platform. It's a website with news from both sides, and you can chime in on any story, and you can add your own stories. You may even be invited to join me on my podcast for a chance to share your opinion, whether we agree or not. Sign up today at PoliticalStorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice as well. PoliticalStorm.com. 
Thank you so much for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. We've got a special guest joining us today, Shola Richards, a certified emotional intelligence practitioner, an in-demand leadership trainer and consultant, an award-winning director of training at a world-renowned U.S. hospital. He created a blog called The Positivity Solution back in 2013, and now he's got a new book out called Making Work Work. The Positivity Solution for Any Work Environment. I'm excited to say welcome to Shola Richards. How are you, Shola? Hey, John. How's it going? Thank you so much for having me on. Well, we're excited to have you on the program. Let's talk about what led up to you deciding to write this book, Making Work Work. Oh, man. So I really had um, a toxic work environment that I'm sure many of your listeners might be able to relate to if it's um, during drive time, they're driving to a work place that's really toxic where bullying and incivility and rudeness and harassment and all sorts of horrible things that make work not work, for lack of a better way of putting it. And I was in the middle of it. I was in the, it was like a dumpster fire of awfulness that I was felt like I was stuck in. And midway through, about two years into the job, I fell into a very dark, deep depression just from the constant treatment that I was dealing with. And I had some pretty dark thoughts of ending my life. And one horrific day, I was driving down the I-405 freeway here in Los Angeles, and I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to just drive my car off the old freeway overpass. Thankfully, I didn't, but I did have those thoughts, and I almost did. And when I finally kind of came to my senses, I was like, this is ridiculous. I almost lost my, threw everything away because of the horrors of a job. And I quit the job the next day, and I started doing some research on what workplace incivility, workplace bullying, harassment's all about, found out that 65 million Americans are dealing with this. And I was like, who's doing anything to fix this? How come no one's doing anything? After I realized that no one's doing anything, I was like, hey, i got to step up and do it myself. And that's where the book came from. Wow, that's quite a story. I'm really glad that you took the steps to, to help not yourself but others. And I'm really glad you didn't go off the bridge that day. Oh, my. <laughs> That would have been a really bad, bad option. You know, this, but so the sad thing is, I, I, when you're so dark and so depressed about what's going on, your mind is not working well, and I really could have made a very awful decision. So I'm with you, John. I'm glad I'm still here, too. <laughs> Shola, it's got to feel really good to know that you're helping other people that are in situations like the one that you were in. How does it feel to see this book finish now and get the accolades that you're already getting early on here? How does that feel? I am so pumped that the message is getting out there and that the movement to bring kindness and, and, and positivity back to the workplace is real. And it's actually people are saying, oh, my gosh, like, I feel like there's hope now. I actually have strategies for how to deal with my bully boss. I know how to deal with the overwork demands. My boss is calling me at home on the weekends, and I want to play with my kids. And I feel like now I have strategies to be able to deal with that. That's a huge honor. And I am so thankful that people are receptive and that they realize that there is hope and that they do have control. And that was the one thing that I, I wanted to feel like I had when I was dealing with a toxic environment. And since I've been there before, I wanted to give them an actually actionable book that they could use to repair their workplace. And hearing that people are digging it is like the most wonderful praise. That I could, it's like music to my ears. It's the greatest feeling ever. Again, our guest today is Shola Richards, author of Making Work Work. The positivity solution for any work environment. Shola, I got a weird question for you. Who would be the best person to read this book? Would it be the person that's going through that bad situation? Or would this be a better book to give to somebody that's putting people in that situation, like as a gift for the bully or maybe for the boss that's overseeing this stuff and not doing anything about it? Oh, my gosh. Great question. And it's actually that, that's such a perfect question. It's actually a three-part answer to that, but I can make it quick. You already named two of them. So one is definitely for the person who's struggling at work, whether they're on the business end of workplace bullying or chronic overwork. That is really a person that's an this book can really help them in that regard. Also, for the bullies, they, they would actually probably be my last choice, but they're also someone who I think could benefit from it. They're someone who they may not have the awareness to realize that their behaviors are causing the toxic impact that they really are. So for folks that may just lack in self-awareness, this book could be really helpful to kind of make them aware. And the third person, the one that probably gets the least amount of props or who could actually use this book, is someone who just is enjoying their work, but they want to ensure that the spirit of positivity continues, and they really want to ensure that they create an environment where toxicity is not allowed to thrive just because of their behaviors day-to-day. That's where someone can really get a lot of benefit from that, just to 
kind of immunize yourself from all the awfulness that's happening at work and ensure that their work environment continues to stay on point. So in that situation, it's probably somebody that doesn't really have a problem right now, but this book could help maybe avoid that situation in the future. Exactly. And that's what I'm hoping for, John. The idea that they can just continue to do whatever has been working. There's questions in the back of the book that kind of, there's a quiz in the book to see if you are in a toxic environment, which is really cool to see where you are. And also questions at the back of the book for anyone who's in a really good environment to really take the conversation a little bit deeper to see what you're doing that's working and how to ensure that you keep it that way. Again, our guest today, Shola Richards, author of Making Work Work. Shola, where can I find a copy of this book? Anywhere. I've always wanted to say this statement. Any fine retailers where books are sold. I've always wanted to say that because I'm just like, I've always seen people say that like, oh my gosh, I'm an author now. So yeah, anywhere, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, um, wherever books are sold online and and, and all the Barnes & Noble and any bookstore, independent or national chains all throughout the country. Shola, I think it's awesome to hear how excited you are about this. Ah, so fired up. I mean, I just heard a story about this same person. He was going to drive his car off a bridge. (laughs) Yep. To go from that to this, there's definitely something to this. Oh, thanks, John. I appreciate it, man. And I just hope that the message gets out there that we can positively change the world one way or another. Well, that's awesome. Shola, thanks again for chatting with us today. My pleasure, John. Have a good one. Thanks again. Take it easy. Definitely. Again, Shola Richards, he's the author of the book, Making Work Work. The Positivity Solution for Any Work Environment. It's available right now wherever fine books are sold. Thank you so much for listening to The John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This is the world's first and only seven-time lottery game grand prize winner. Since I endorsed Lottolicious, I have won something every single draw. When you join, you'll be giving them the set of numbers that you want them to play, and that's what they will play for you. You don't have to worry about running to the store to buy your tickets. They take care of all that. So if you're looking for the best way to play the lottery, go to RadioLottoPool.com and join today. Again, that's RadioLottoPool.com. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? A day on the planet Mercury lasts approximately 59 days on Earth. That's how long it takes for that to rotate around at one time. They don't get much sleep there. They don't. There's no they there. There's nobody there. How do you know? Have you ever been there? Yes. And when I was there, I was the only one there. (laughs) No, I wasn't there. Hey, fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Michael Jordan shaves his head twice a week on Tuesdays and on Fridays. That's that's super. I really needed to know that. Fun fact for you, Heidi. Why? Why would you have shared that fact? That's just a fun fact. Okay. Uh, As is this. Almost half of the newspapers in the world are published in the United States and Canada. Mm. So the rest of the world, all the rest of the world has the rest, like just another half. So Mm. half are here and I'm done. (laughs) Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? There are 48 teaspoons in a cup. Oh. Three teaspoons make a tablespoon and 16 tablespoons make a cup. So 48 teaspoons to make a cup, that just seems like a lot. And our final fun fact for you, it takes 15 months of instructions at the Pentagon School of Music to be a band leader, but only 13 months to be a jet pilot. So it takes longer to be a band leader. At least it did in 1987. Congress was shocked to learn this. So there you go. A couple of fun facts for you on a Thursday. Email marketing is affordable and a proven way to grow your business if it's done right. You can stay in contact with your customers to let them know when you have new things to offer. You stay in control the whole time, too. You decide when the messages are sent and you decide what is being said. So you're constantly in control of your business image. You can do this, but don't try it on your own. Team up with one of the biggest names in email marketing, Constant Contact. Sign up for a free trial right now at Radiosavings.com. Sign up now at Radiosavings.com. John and Heidi. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. College students and credit card debt. These are two things that go hand in hand quite often. Mm-hmm. You know, there are a lot of people who got their first credit card in college. Uh-huh. Many college students apply for credit cards to get things like free T-shirts and other perks that seem harmless. But if it's poorly managed, uh, your finances during your college years can lead to serious debt and bad credit scores later. A recent survey by True Credit found nearly one in four respondents left school with more than five thousand dollars in credit card yeah, debt. They prey on those colleges. Oh, they do. I mean, they have tables set up mm. all over the place yeah. on the first day of school, trying to get these kids because to sign they up. know they'll sign up for it. Yeah. They're like, "Oh, hey, I'll sign up for that." They're like, "Hey, you can build your credit." No, what they should be saying is, "Hey, you should sign up and destroy your credit," because <laughs> yeah. that's that's more likely what's going to happen. 
In fact, 10% indicated they owed more than $10,000 in credit cards when they graduated. The survey also revealed that 40% of college students have signed up for a credit card just to get the free gift or whatever the special offer was. Hey, fill out this thing. Just fill out. I'll give you a free T-shirt. Do you really need a free T-shirt that bad for $10,000 in credit card debt? More than half of those left college with debt, uh, according to a study from Nellie May, the average credit card debt for college students, average $2,748. Wow. Wow. I wonder what the T-shirt says. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just ruined my credit. And I, all got I got $10,000 in credit card debt, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. That would be an awesome idea. For, <laughs> nobody would actually give them out. I just ruined my credit, and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. <laughs> we should make those. That would be hilarious. Anyway, for a person that makes minimum payments, it takes 18 years to pay off a $2,500 college credit card debt. Yikes. That's a long time. Uh in addition to the credit card debt, they're also racking up student loans. So it's kind of crazy. Uh, be careful out there. It's a jungle out there, kids. All right. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday. John and Heidi. Let's talk business. If you're in business, you need a website. Come on, it's 2016. Do you really think the internet thing is not going to catch on? Many business owners that don't have a website think it's just too expensive. Well, now it's not. You can actually build a website set up for less than $30 a month. If you need help designing it or just laying something out, we're here to help you. Get a free trial right now at radiosavings.com. You can actually build the site and see it online for free during this trial. So why not check it out at radiosavings.com. Do you remember Glamour Shots? Oh, yeah. Did, did you ever have any of those no, taken? No, I didn't. I remember. They're ridiculous. For a while there, those were really popular. Oh, they're though. ridiculous. Like, every lady that I knew had like I'm Glamour so Shots. I'm so glad I never had one done. You should have gotten some. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to dress you up while you're sleeping, and I'm going to take some Glamour Shots of you while you're sleeping. <laughs> that is just super creepy. <laughs> Here's some photos of my wife sleeping. Notice how I did her makeup for her there. <laughs> Well, <laughs> I would wake. There's no way I would sleep through that unless you drugged me first, no. and then that's illegal. If we do it some weekend when you've had too much to drink, we'll have to come up with a new name for it. It could, probably couldn't be called Glamour Shots. Passed out shots. <laughs> Take some shots to get the shots. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, the reason we're even bringing this up, because some homeless dogs in Arkansas are getting their own Glamour Shots. It's a thing called Shelter Pet Project by Tammy Swardick. She dressed up. Uh, a bunch of rescue dogs at a local animal shelter in Union County. And this happened in El Dorado, Kansas. And they took some beautiful photos, put them in fun, creative outfits. And they have been adopting these dogs like crazy. Oh, that's nice. After the first shoot, adoptions went through the roof. And the dogs uh, that were photographed were the first ones that were adopted. Oh, so they're I like, hey, where's that. the one with the tutu? I like that one. She was cute. So uh, there you go. If you've got dogs and you're struggling to get them adopted, take some cute photos and get them on the internet. That'll that'll work. Coming up, we've got some ways to not get hired. If that's what you're up to, it's on the way. John and Heidi. Here's some surefire ways to not get hired at your next job interview. All According right. to an employment agency, they say there are some people who are just not that smart. There are, no, I don't think it's that they're not that smart. I think there are people that seriously do not want to get hired because they would lose other benefits. All right. Well, be careful out there because here's one. A truck driver said he could drive a truck as long as it was, a, it was not orange. What? <laughs> yeah. What on Steve earth? Steve McMahon, a manager with an employment agency, LMR, says silly answers like this could keep you from getting a job. Another candidate gave window cleaner as a reference, but when asked for a contact number, he said, oh, that guy died. A woman said that she left her previous job because her boss would not date her. Another woman who got a job through LMR later complained about her production line position, saying, my duties include juggling, standing on my head, and knitting fog. Mr. McMahon wow. says... These answers are certainly not a good way to get a good job. No, so of course not. But if, with the window cleaner guy, if his boss died, who, whose phone number are they supposed to give him? Yeah. It's not like there's a direct line to heaven. So yeah, I understand If the guy that. passed away, he passed away. You can't call him. But he didn't even put the guy's name. He just put, I was a window cleaner. And he didn't tell him who it was. It was almost like he made it up, which is what this guy thinks he did. So anyway, coming up, going to talk about tea time. That's on the way. John and Heidi. When it comes to politics, quite often you have an opinion, especially for this election. How would you like a platform to let your opinion be heard? PoliticalStorm.com is that platform. It's a website with news from both sides, and you can chime in on any story 
and you can add your own stories. You may even be invited to join me on my podcast for a chance to share your opinion whether we agree or not. Sign up today at politicalstorm.com. You have a choice, and now you have a voice as well. Politicalstorm.com. John and Heidi. Heidi, are you feeling stressed out? Every minute of every single day. You need a little tea time. That's what you need. And I'm not talking about golf, although I think that would help too. You know, we should go play golf sometime. <laughs> okay. We're not golfers, but I think that would be a hoot just to go. It is fun. I do, I do like to. And, and laughing golf. makes you lose weight. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> well, they're saying if you're feeling stressed out, you should schedule some tea time. Not golfing, but actual tea. Researchers from the University of College of London say having a cup of tea can help speed recovery from stress. Men who drink black tea four times a day for six weeks found to have lower levels of stress hormone cortisol than a group of men who drank fake tea substitutes. The tea drinkers also reported a greater feeling of relaxation after performing tasks designed to raise your stress level. While the tea won't help you avoid stress, it will relax you more quickly afterwards who drinks tea four times a day uh, you know i probably would if i thought that it was something that i should be doing i'd do that you know you I should drink... be drinking water all day and you don't drink water yeah that's a lot of work well, <laughs> water, <laughs> that's what i'm like, saying on, just... you have to make tea water oh, you yeah. can just <laughs> somebody got it. brings it to me on a platter <laughs> i just yeah I'd take that they say uh <laughs> it could be good to know <laughs> because slow recovery following acute stress has been associated with a greater risk of chronic illness like coronary heart disease that's how my dad died. I should be drinking tea four times a day. Mm. I remember I used to drink tea. I have this little, uh, co- what do you call it? A tea kettle? What is that? The, the red thing that you plug in? It, it, it brews where, your tea. Where is it? Where I is have that? no idea. Did you throw it away? I did not throw it. Are you sure you I didn't John, throw it away? I did not throw it away. But you turn, you flip a little switch, and if you have water in there, it boils right away. It's and wherever was, the second coffee pot is. Because you had a. Did you throw that away too? <laughs> <laughs> No, we gotta, but that would not be a lie if I had, because it would be the same place. That the <laughs> That's where I'm thinking that you you didn't throw them away. You took them and donated them, didn't you? <laughs> oh, we're gonna have this conversation off the air. Coming up, we've got some good news that is on the way. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. Send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. Time now for some good news. Once upon a time... <laughs> I can't talk now. Once upon a time, there was a strange little woman who lived in an upside-down house. Her name was Mrs. Piggly Wiggly. Do you remember her? A combination of friend and therapist to all the kids who lived in her small town. Author Betty McDonald began making up stories about Mrs. Piggly Wiggly for her family in the 1940s. Those bedtime tales led to a series of classic children's books. Well, now McDonald's great-granddaughter has teamed up with another author, and they're creating... Uh, she was the creator of the Babysitter Club books. Remember oh, those? yeah, yeah. So the author of that and the granddaughter, uh, the great-granddaughter of the Piggly Wiggly series to reboot the series for modern readers. If... This brings back some nostalgic memories. You might want to check out the article. I've got it posted at facebook.com slash John and Heidi show. Did you read the babysitter book clubs or babysitter no, club but I'm, books? I am aware of them, I, uh, but I was not aware of Piggly, Piggly Wiggly. Wiggly. Yeah, they're, so those, those are older. They, came, they started in the 1940s, so that's before your time. It's back when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, it's before my time too? Hey, I got one other quick thing that I want to throw this on because uh, I just didn't know for sure where to put this. And I think it's good news. It's actually really kind of cool. There's different kinds of good news. Some good news like that, you know, this neat book series and these two teaming up. That's good news. But how effective could a paper helmet be? You wouldn't think it'd be very effective. You wouldn't think. Yeah. But a college student has invented a recyclable, foldable helmet that is so compact it could be sold in a vending machine or carried in your pocket. And it's an industrial design student from Pratt Institute in New York City. This young lady's helmet is made from waterproof recycled paper, allowing it to hold up in inclement weather. And it's got a honeycomb pattern that allows the helmet to absorb blows from any direction. So you can wear this paper helmet 
and like if you if like a bicycle helmet because this the struggle is people that ride a bicycle to work now where do you put the helmet so this is a paper okay. helmet that literally folds up and you put it in your pocket but when you put the thing on it's very effective but blows of how of how fast it's actually pretty impressive you can check out the story again at facebook.com slash john and heidi show i just thought that was really kind of cool good news Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show on a Thursday.